Sometimes the action can give you some terrific clues to what's really working out there. Take the cybersecurity space. Last week, FireEye, one of the least consistent players in the space, reported a hideous quarter stock got crushed, down 19% single session. More important, the pin action from FireEye caused the rest of the cybersecurity cohort to get hit too, with one exception, Fortinet. FTNT, a provider of unified threat management solutions to enterprise customers, barely blinked in response to the weakness at its competitor. Fortinet gives its customers an end-to-end -end cybersecurity offering, which eliminates the need to patch together a system from multiple different vendors. It's also not an episodic company, so to speak. Now, we know that the entire cybersecurity group got obliterated in the big growth stock sell-off from last August through the beginning of February. But since then, some of the cybersecurity stocks, not all, but some have come roaring back. Fortinet is up now 40% from its February lows. And one big reason for that is because when the company reported its most recent results two weeks ago, they delivered a nice three-cent earnings beat off a nine-cent basis with higher than anticipated revenue and they increased by 34% year-over-year. Hard to get that kind of growth. Not to mention robust billings and expanded gross margins. Plus, Fortinet's guidance for both the next quarter and the full year came in well ahead of Wall Street's expectations. Granted, the stock's run and it's still down 35% from last summer. And if this market starts rotating back into growth stocks based on fears of a worldwide slowdown, Fortinet's exactly the kind of name you want to reach for. So let's dig deep with Drew Delmato. He's the he's Fortinet's chief financial officer. Find out more about the company where it's headed. Mr. Delmato, welcome to Mad Money. Thank Good you, to see Jim. you, sir. Great to be here. Drew, I got to tell you, um, I think sometimes what speaks loudly about a company is the partners they have. And it jumps out for me immediately that you are Amazon and Microsoft Azure. That's big, right. Big, two big cloud plays. They're your partners. That's How'd right. How'd you get them? Well, uh, Cloud is coming. I mean, the, there are three big trends going on right okay. now, uh, things people are thinking about. Uh, perimeters are becoming borderless. Uh, uh, and the, uh, the cloud is coming. Right. And also, there's a lot of complexity out there. And with the cloud coming, everybody's shifting to the cloud providers. Right now, there's a lot of hybrid models out there, but people are looking for metered models as well. And that's what they do. They provide it as a service. We sell the virtual license to them, and you can download it and buy it from those partners as well as a variety of managed service providers that we have as now, partners as well. At one time, uh, there were different parts of the enterprise that you had to protect. But now I think you do need this seamless effect. You got the cell phone to the web to come back. I mean, right. there's so many places to hack. That's right. And it's interesting because you're talking about effectively IoT. Right. And, and that was one Absolutely. of the vectors I mentioned. Yep. And so thinking from IoT to the cloud, um, that's what sort of Fortinet's security fabric does. We provide the software, the services, the solutions, and the partnerships, as we just mentioned, right. to go for all the way from IoT to the cloud at all points along the network. One thing I would mention is Gartner re recently said that about a quarter of all cyber breaches will originate from IoT devices by about 2020. Would that also be your car? Could be. So all of those things, we call them headless devices because right. they have no security headless on them. them. Right. That's right. None. Now, a lot of people feel that all these stocks, all, the, all these companies grow at the same pace. Right. You were growing at roughly three times the market. That's so how are you able runs. to do that? Yep. Uh, well, we invested, uh, we tripled our rate of growth from about 2013. We did invest tripled. a lot. That's other, right. Other we guys invested. felt that that was a waste because it, it kept your earnings <laughs> uh, from exploding. But we're grabbing major share. We are right. gra grabbing major share. We've, we now have, we really focused on the enterprise, Jim. Right. We have over 270,000 customers. We added 9,000 customers last quarter alone. And we count the majority of the Fortune 100, Fortune 100 enterprises as our customers now. But at the same time, you decided to do a, yeah. a buyback. Now, most growth companies don't feel that they need to do that. Was that because things just got out of control of the downside? Well, we saw value, quite frankly. Right. We have the cash. We have close have to $1.2 billion in cash. We've been focused on organic growth. We've done right. a great way in our Fortinet security fabric. Mm -hmm. The reason it's so great is that, can I give you an analogy? Sure. Uh, we were talking to a CIO of a major bank. He said there's all these features and functionalities out of there. He had 30 plus vendors, security vendors with technologies, different technologies in his environment. And so he said what he really needs is like an organic tree. And right now what he has is somebody sold him the roots, somebody sold him the trunk, somebody sold him the branches, somebody sold him the leaves. Looks great on a piece of paper, but it falls down from its own weight. But what Fortinet does is we start with our ASIC architecture as the okay. roots, okay. and Fortinet's operating system goes all the way up through the roots through the trunk, through the branches, to all the points, the endpoints along the way. Think of those as being leaves. That's the full integration of Fortinet Security Fabric. Now, when I see that you've got, uh, again, I'm looking at Fortinet's cloud strategy, okay. the private, you have Cisco mentioned. Now, at one point, Cisco would have said, we're trying to wipe out everybody in the space, but they turned to a more cooperative approach? 
That's because, look, we're here, we're all here to protect. Right, and right. And if we want to partner with whoever, and we can help our customers, we're going to do that. They obviously have a lot of network share, so it makes sense to be able to cover enterprises that have uh, their network infrastructure. Now, I thought that you have a customer that we ha can't leave out, uh, NATO. Now, That's NATO right. obviously is under, I, I presume like all these government organizations, under attack from, uh, from the east, the west, from the bad guys everywhere. So you do that kind of threat prevention too. Well, you know, the bad guys are after information. Yeah. And so if we can aggregate information from multiple sources, absolutely NATO is one that's mm -hmm. very valuable, as well as the hundred or, other, hundred or so other providers of information that we have that we consolidate and protect, you know, many enterprises and governments around the world. Now, do you, uh, when you were, are recruited by a government, how did they clear you so that, I mean, one of the things I talked about this was CyberArk. Huh? I mean, you know, how, you, when someone leaves your company, how do you know they're not a bad guy? They don't go with the bad guys. Well, we, you know, obviously we, we vet our people right. and we're well vetted by all the enterprises. Everybody's looking at that. Uh, one of the things we point out is the value of independent certification. So think of the FDA years ago. Right. There was no one testing medicine or evaluating medicine independently. That's right. still the case, generally speaking, with security. But there's something called NSS Labs, for instance, that does independent certification. And we tend to test out in the uh, upper right or towards the top in terms of both performance and security effectiveness. Okay, and uh, for, it wasn't clear to me, you mentioned banks. I mean, I still feel like I have to check my <laughs> bank deposit. I check my bank once a week, is that yeah. enough? Well, it depends if they're a Fortinet customer. Well, but, but. Well, but no, I mean, why don't we know the banks that spend more money than the others? I mean, if yeah. they're not spending, we have to presume that they're, well, you mentioned one of your presentations, if they're sitting still, they're going to get hacked, right? Look, I think they all want to be thinking architecturally right now. Right. And uh, it's that fabric, the integration, getting rid of the themes, the, uh, the seams, excuse me, yeah. in the network. Continuously, there are so many point solutions out there, and the trend is towards consolidation. No one really wants to buy threads anymore. Right. They want to be able to manage complexity through a single pane of glass. They want it integrated, and they want to be ready for the cloud. And what Fortinet does is provide the coat, the coat that basically provides them, not threads, but something woven together tightly. Software, solution, services, and partnerships goes end right. to end. Well, you wouldn't be with Cisco and Microsoft and Amazon if you weren't the ideal partner. That's Drew Delmont. Del Motto. He is the CFO of Fortinet, FTNT, a stock that we have liked for a very long time on Mad Money. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.